What's going on guys and welcome to my Element 3D tutorial. Uh, today I'm just going to be going over the basics and um, show you guys how to get started. Um, once you really learn the basics of Element 3D, you'll see it's really not, not that complicated. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and jump into it and I can show you guys how I use it. Okay, so first thing you need to know about Element 3D is that it actually does not work with a PNG image. So if I drag my logo in here, which is a PNG, it actually does not work. So what we have to do is mask it out. So I'm going to speed through myself masking this and you can do the same if you're trying to do something similar. But um, yeah, I'll get to the next step after I do that. Okay, so now I've got this whole thing masked out, we can go ahead and start doing our Element 3D. But here's the thing, we're not going to put Element 3D on this layer, because that's not how it works. Um, what we're going to have to do is actually create a solid and then add Element 3D to that solid. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's hit Control Y and name it whatever, I'm going to name it Ace E3D. Okay, and now we have a solid, the color doesn't matter, so don't worry about that. Now we can go ahead and go to Effects. Video Copilot, Element. Okay, so now we can go into our custom layer settings right here and hit the drop down arrow and we're gonna go to text, custom text and mask. And then the first path layer is gonna be this um, mask layer that we did with our logo. So I'm gonna select the um, name of the logo and then now I can go into the scene setup and when I click extrude, there we go. Now we can click and drag and rotate around and see what we got. Looks pretty good. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and get rid of this grid because that's kind of annoying to me. Uh, get rid of the grid. You can get rid of the gizmo too if you want. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add the material that we want. Um, I usually use glass, so I'm gonna use that today. Uh, so let's go to presets, um, physical, Let's go all the way down and wireframe glass is the one that I like using. And so what we're gonna do is um hit this drop down arrow up here in the extrusion model, and then you should see your um material. Click that, and here's where we're gonna extrude the object. So turn this extrude up. I usually think I usually use five around there. Yeah. Anywhere around five is usually good for at least my logo. Um and then I'm gonna scroll down to diffuse color and we're gonna use white today. And then scroll down some more to the wireframe and disable that. Okay, so now we've got our base. We can go ahead and back into After Effects, click OK. And now we have a 3D version of my logo, but it's too big, so we're gonna fix all that. But first, let's go ahead and turn off our um, 2D version. We don't delete it or else watch what happens. Everything will get erased. So <laughs> you just have to turn off the visuals and leave it where it's at for now. So now what we can do is start animating this how we want. Um, first I'm gonna show you like the basic way to animate which is right here in World Transform. And you can open World Rotation and you can do rotations like that, uh, Z. Um, you know, you can animate this, keyframe this stuff however you like. But I like using multi-objects so I'm gonna show you that. Now in order to get the type of animation I did like in this one um, where it kind of, the letters are spaced apart and they're rotating and they're also actually um, scaling in too, so like the letters are really small and getting bigger. Um, so what we're gonna do, it's actually multi-object settings, so we're gonna go ahead and um, turn that on. And to turn on, that on, you have to go into, oh, wrong, there we go, uh, group one, particle look, and then multi-object and enable. So all these, don't get overwhelmed, all these settings open up, but we're only gonna use, I think, three of them. So. You've got X rotation, Y rotation, Z rotation, and you've got displacement, you've got X, Y, Z displacement, all these different things, but we're gonna focus on Y rotation. You can see what that does right there. So let's go ahead and hit the stopwatch on that, and then we're gonna use X displacement, like that. So let's hit the stopwatch. And we're going to use size, which is actually, it's up here. So that's pretty self-explanatory, it just scales it. So um, keyframe that. 
and now we're going to tap U and select all these. I'm going to go ahead and press F9. So keep in mind, this is where we want everything to end. It's like this. So let's put these keyframes at the end over here. So then let's go to the beginning of our timeline and then adjust these um, to get our animation. So let's go ahead and do our rotation first. Um, so let's rotate it like at least one time around. Um, see, it says one times here. So I went all the way around and another 38 degrees. Um, obviously, this thing is going to be different. Just kind of play around with the numbers. And then the X is place. I'm going to go all the way to like 1.8, I guess. And then the size is going to be zero at the beginning. So now let's go into our graph editor and adjust all these graphs to get the speed that we want. So at the beginning, I'm going to turn that one up and then squeeze it. Actually, I'm going to do every single one like this. Um, so this one's going to be like that. And like this. Okay, now let's take a look at what we have so far. Okay, that's not bad. I think we could use some more rotation though. So I'm just going to up this number even more. Um, let's go like, let's go two times around. How about that? Um, keep going. Okay, now it's at two times around. And the graph, like that, should be fine. Let's take a look. Okay, for the sake of the tutorial, that's okay. Um, next, let's go ahead and add our background so we can do our, our lighting after that. So let's go ahead and add another solid, control Y, and then I'm gonna just name it, no, I'm gonna name it gradient ramp. Cause we're gonna add a gradient ramp to this and Go ahead and search for that. Ramp. Okay. And then change the ramp shape to radial ramp. And I'm gonna change the start of the ramp down to the center and the end of the ramp up so it's more um, softer. And I'm gonna switch the colors the other way. And actually let's go higher on this. Go higher. It's a little too bright. So let's turn this down some. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and add a glow to the, um, the logo. Um, so I'm just gonna click on the layer and then add glow. I like stylized glow. I mean, you which, use whichever one you like if you wanna get the same effect. Uh, radius up some, let's say like 80. And then threshold seems kinda high. Let me turn that down, I think. Or maybe the other way, my bad. Yeah, like right about there. Looks like 95 is a good number. Okay. So then we got, uh, it's kind of interesting. It's okay. Um, now I'm going to add ambient occlusion, which is kind of in the render settings of element 3D. I'm going to show you how to use that real quick. Um, hit the drop down arrow and let's close all this. We're going to use, go into render settings right here. Hit the drop down arrow and then go down to ambient occlusion and enable it. And then what we're going to do is change the intensity and the radius to get the desired look so it's on black right now that should work for what we're doing it is going to add some shading to see that it adds some shading inside the um the logo itself that's actually fine right there just gives a more realistic look i think our glow settings are a little off though because it's kind of flashing right there so let's um adjust that glow i had the flash let's go to the yeah it's too probably too strong intensity probably needs to come down no. or you just keep it shiny all right that'll work there and um, the last thing I did was add a shadow to give it more a little more realism to look like it's actually in the environment and that's a simple little um, effect there all I did was duplicate the element 30 layer and um, took the duplicate, put underneath, and turned to a 3D layer, and then hit P, and I brought the layer down, and then hit R, and changed the X rotation, like so, like that, um, maybe a little lower, right about there should be fine, and then I changed the layer to black by there's a couple ways to do it, but you can, oops, you can add a tint, change the white to black like that. 
and then I added blur sharpen go into Gaussian blur and blurriness up to like a hundred I think yeah and then press T for opacity and bring that down and you get a little bit of a shadow natural looking shadow keep in mind that this doing it like that instead of using drop shadow it makes it hard to make changes so make sure you do that last because if you try to if you try to animate the top one it's not going to match the bottom one anymore so keep that in mind you or you can just use drop shadow but i just like how this looks better for this type of um, look um yeah that's pretty much it um last thing i could show you is how to just use different colors with the ambient occlusion in the background um so just to get more creative with it so if you wanted to change the gradient ramp to let's chart change the end color to like a red like that and then we can go into our ambient occlusion of element 3d and change the color to a red um let's change the settings a little bit too intensity up see that it's actually turning the same red as the background that's really all you have to do so if you have like an environment that you're trying to get the text to look like it's actually fitting into you can use ambient occlusion to get the shading that you want that fits that background okay so last thing i would show you guys is how to use the same method but with text basically just adding text in element 3d it's actually way easier so by text, I mean the text you actually made in After Effects. So like Control Alt Shift T, and then just type in Ace, and then I'm gonna scale it up, and then align it in the center. Okay. Um, all you need to do is go into um, yeah I already have it open. Custom layers and text, and change the um, source from our, the logo to the text, and that's really all there is. To it and you now you got the text doing the same thing and then the shadow same thing uh custom layers base. that's really all it is so if you're using if you're using text that you made in after that you typed into after effects it's way easier if you're using like a, an image or a, i don't know something you downloaded off of google you can you have to mask it out or else if element 3d can't recognize it but um that's pretty much all I have for you guys this tutorial. Um, leave a like if you guys enjoyed and um, dislike if I didn't explain it right. <laughs> but yeah, leave some suggestions down below if you guys have any. And I'll see you guys next time.